Good afternoon. Hello. Hope you guys are doing well. Good afternoon. All right. So just wait for a few minutes before we start. Uh, we still got some of our brothers and sisters signing in right now. So praise the Lord. Hope you guys are doing uh, great by God's grace. And I am happy to be here. So hello. Hello there. You know what's funny about this um, Facebook Live is that sometimes when, um, when I go live, I get to see your comments. But m most of the time, I actually don't. So today, I actually do so I can say hi to you guys. Hello. <laughs> You know, and um, sometimes it's just a blank screen, and it's so weird because I just have to look at my face for like an hour, right? <laughs> and it's such a weird feeling, but it's you know it's all good, it's all good. So hello, hello, brothers and sisters. I am glad to see you guys here. And um, as of right now, we are back on uh, GCQ here in Metro Manila, and um, you know I'm thankful that things are moving forward. And uh, we get to have uh, small fellowship groups once again. And I, we are still not allowed to host any big services or, or conferences or big public events. So, of course, we're going we're, we're gonna to respect what the government says um, about that, right? But uh, we, are, we are now able to gather in smaller uh, groups. So some of us have been going around. If you guys want to meet up. You know, send us a message on this page if you want to have a fellowship. Let us know which area you are from or where you stay or work. And, you know, uh, let's work something out about like next week or something. So I can't promise to go around everywhere and be there personally. But at least one of our brothers, one of our fellow servants in this ministry will be there. And uh, to minister uh, to you and have fellowship with you guys. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Whew. Praise the Lord. So I'm happy to be here, and uh, we do have an interesting uh, topic uh, today at this 5 p.m. Bible study. So um, before I get to the message, just a few um, updates. I don't, don't want to say announcements. It's not really anything to announce. It's just an update. So um, this coming week will be our... Um, last week of doing panel type Bible studies okay so af after this Wednesday and Sunday after that we're gonna be having um, online it's still gonna be a Bible study but it's more gonna be like a like a service and we will do another program another segment panel segment for um, question and answer okay question and answer so we'll be starting those things, and we are excited to do that. But I'm still going to continue this uh, every Saturday Bible study uh, at 5 p.m., uh, the live Bible study where we can just um, you know, have fellowship in the Word. So, yeah, exciting stuff up ahead, and we are excited. We are hoping that the uh, IATF will be able to give us more relaxed, um, more relaxed guidelines. You know, for us to be able to have uh, fellowship and services in public once again. So pray with us, please. Pray with us. We're believing for uh, God's favor on these things, on this thing that the, that the virus would just die out and go, that the numbers would be resolved, the curve would be flattened. You guys, you know, I saw an article earlier today about um, about I think some some organization asking help. From the churches because because um, I think a lot of people are having are developing mental health issues and I understand it's a it's a bad time you know you got you got you have economic problems you got you got um, you got uh, rel relatives and friends who are sick relatives and friends who are financially devastated you have um, you know, a bunch of families that are affected by this whole thing, this whole COVID lockdown. I mean, if if a uh, majority of people 
if they are not affected by the sickness, they are affected by the the economic implications of the sickness and of the lockdown. You know, people are losing their jobs. You got 45% unemployment. So because of all of this, there's so much, um, you know, there's so much going on that people who are not rooted in the word of God, people who are not uh, firm in the faith and in their identity in Christ are, are being afflicted by, 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 um, by mental health issues. So suicide rates are up, they're climbing, you know, like, unfortunately, I, I saw a few on my newsfeed, like people who are actually on my friends list, I, I think two of them just in the past couple of months committed suicide. And, and that's, that's really heartbreaking. You know, I mean, these are people I, I'll admit, I don't know exactly everybody <laughs> in my friends list. My, my Facebook account is a little, it's, it's rather public, you know, and, um, and I just use it to, to stay in touch and communicate with friends from other countries and here and there and with you guys, you know, but, um, you know, there, there are a couple of people I noticed that over the past couple of months committed suicide. So this is very real, you know, and, and now anyway, I, I, going back, I, I saw that article and the article was about this organization asking churches to do something about this. And I was like, well, you know, the problem is, I mean, you guys created all these guidelines and, you know, you would consider church to be a, a non-essential um, service or whatever, you know, but now you have the repercussions of having mental health issues and this and that. And now you're asking the church to do something about it. Well, you know, guys, that, I saw this coming. I saw this coming. You know, like months ago, March I think 16 or 17 was it earlier and they declared the lockdown you know I I'd really heard the Lord speak to me and, and, and warn me that it's gonna be a dark time so somebody has to shine the light and that's why I decided to teach you know every day so that's where I met a lot of you guys a lot of you guys have found this page uh, through that you know to be honest I never liked doing Facebook live I don't like face on the camera I prefer to just do Bible studies or preach or do whatever the Lord tells me to right but at that point in time that is what the Lord tasked me to do so um, that's why I do this and a lot of you guys instead of getting depressed these past months a lot of you I am so encouraged because I've seen your growth in Christ I have seen your growth and the fruit that has come about from those the seed of the Word of God planted in your heart just over the, the these past months while the rest of the world with the unrenewed minds of the people out there who, who don't value the word of God while they're suffering we got a bunch of people brothers and sisters who decided to take the word of God and plant it in their heart and you guys are watching right now you know and you guys are bearing fruit and what's my point I'm not saying one is better than the other I'm just saying we have a solution we have a solution. This is not even the message, guys. I'm just sharing out of my heart right now. I don't know why. You know, but we have a solution to this whole depression problem. We have a solution to all these uh, unwelcome suicidal thoughts and anxiety and all that. All these worries, the stress, you know. And, and we got a solution. It's found in the Word of God. And people think that we're crazy and people think that we're overacting. But hey, guess what? We're healthy. Hey, guess what? We are We are blessed. You know, that we are in season and out of season, even during the season of the drought. Guess what? We're bearing fruit. The ministry is, is doing super well. We are able to bless and reach a lot of people. We get a lot of um, uh, testimonies of people who are encouraged, people who, are, who have renewed their faith and love for the Lord, who have really dedicated their lives to the Lord, people who have received freedom and, and, and healing, supernatural healing from the Lord that... You know, so some of you guys may even be watching right now. I don't know if that's you right now, but um, you know, I'm just I'm just blessed. You know, so I, what I'm saying is that God's economy does not depend on like human circumstances. You know, heaven does not lose business. Heaven does not uh, appreciate or depreciate in value. Heaven has no supply and demand. You know what I mean? Heaven is heaven. And, and our job here as kingdom carriers, as children of the Most High God, is to manifest heaven here on earth. 
so that we carry out God's will on earth as it is in heaven. That is the whole purpose of having Christ in us. And, you know, anyway, so I'm going to lead to my message. My message today, it's very timely because I know that a lot of you guys are having a tough time too. A lot of you guys are, are struggling right now. And I just want to encourage you with this word, with the word of God. And I pray that this will really speak um, volumes, volumes to your heart. You know, so, yeah, so let's pray. Let's start off with a prayer. Let's give thanks. Let's pray. Lord God, Father, we thank you for this this afternoon. We thank you for this day that we get a chance to 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 um just have fellowship, even just online, Lord. You know, technically we are still on quarantine, but the Word of God has never been locked down. The Word of God is spreading like fire. That through the fire of the Holy Spirit, Lord, more people will be touched, more people will be reached, more people will be would be blessed by Your Word. More people would have a divine encounter with You, O oh Lord. Father, so I just lift up to you the hearts of every single person watching this right now, that in the name of Jesus, they would receive the truth, receive this message op with, with open arms, Lord, that this would take root in their heart, that would grow and develop, and that even though we are going through difficult times right now, Father, we will be fruitful. We will be fruitful. Heaven will manifest here on earth, because you are a good God. Your arm is not short. You are almighty, all-powerful. And you are the God that even before we need anything, you have already, you already know about it. You've already provided for it. So, Father, we thank you for this time. We lift this up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, you know, you know, so we got an interesting topic and like, like what you see in the title, I don't know if you saw the title, but the title of this message is The Worshipful Heart. The worshipful heart, you know. So, what what is worship anyway? You know, um, the guys, there's a million messages on on praise and worship and what worship is and this and that, and you know, everybody like I've I've heard a lot of good messages on 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 like having a worshipful heart. I, I've heard a lot of messages on um on praise and worship and like what's praise and what's worship. Everybody has their own take. Everybody has their own um, understanding of it or application of it. And you know what? I'm not saying one is better than the other. I believe that like praise and worship um, of the Lord, it speaks to you differently in different seasons of your life. You know, because you've got teachings that oh, praise is like this. Then worship is like that. So like, yeah, amen. And that, that's awesome. I'm not going to contradict because whatever you say, praise and worship of the Lord, it's a good thing. You know what I mean? It is a good thing. So my, what is my point? My point is just like, I just want to share what's in my heart right now. I'm not saying that my definition is the perfect definition. I'm not saying that this is, um, this is the right one and everything else is wrong. That's not my point. My point uh, today is that this is what the Lord has put in my heart. And this is what spoke to me. You know, this is what the Lord put in my heart. And he, he showed me this message at two in the morning. <laughs> Not yesterday, I think a few days back. But uh, he showed He showed this to me at two in the morning to, sh to share with you all. And, um, you know, and, and it's just, it's just, I'm not saying it's the only definition, but I want you guys to understand and absorb this. Like what is praise and what is worship, right? So, you know, a lot of people define praise and worship. Like if, if you were uh, uh, in the worship team, if you were part of the music ministry, I served in the music ministry for four years. And, um, and uh, you know, I, I miss playing. It was cool, you know, but I, it's just the Lord led me to a different season now. But as you see here in Metanoia, we also play as well. So I enjoy serving in the music ministry as well with my brothers. And, um, you know, but it's not something I do exclusively, unlike before, that I just would play every weekend. But anyway, so... It's funny because some people, like a lot of Christians, when you say praise and worship, well, like what's a praise song and what's a worship song? They would say the praise song is the fast song, the worship song is the slow song. And uh, I find that really funny, you know, because that's totally not, <laughs> you know, pag sinabi mong praise song, gusto nila medyo upbeat pang intro or worship song, yung latter on, yung medyo slow paced. And um, it's funny how they think that, you know, some people, I'm not saying my old team did that, no, no, I'm just referring to, 
uh, Christians in general would say stuff like that. Where that, that's that's not um, praise is not fast, worship is not slow. That's not what it is. But um, I want to point this out, guys. Praise anyone can praise. Anyone can praise. I can praise you. I can say how how great you are and how nice you are. You can praise me. You can tell me how great I am. But I don't think I'm great. <laughs> but but um, I mean you can do that. You can praise your wife. You can tell her how beautiful she is. You can praise. Your, your husband, you can tell him how hardworking he is. You can praise anyone. You can praise your boss. You can praise your employees. You can praise anyone. But only God deserves to be worshipped. Amen? Praise is easy. You can praise. You can praise. You can pay compliments. You can say good stuff about a lot of stuff. A lot of people. A lot of different things. You can praise the, the, the uh, a restaurant. Or you can praise a hardworking frontliner. You can go praise him. But only God is to be worshipped because God is the only one who is the supreme he is the only he is the, the the potentate sovereign God he is a good God so you know here's the thing worship is is something that it's not based on circumstances you know like unlike unlike praise because praise is something that usually comes out of your mouth when you're out of when you're joyful like if you were to do something really nice for somebody else, they would praise you and they would say, "Oh, you're so good and you're this and that." And 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 you know, if you were to help other people out, you know, or extend a, a, a helping hand, they would they would praise you. Or you do something good or if if you are a student and then you get really high grades, your parents would praise you, right? So anyway, what is my point? You know, praise often I'm not saying it always is, but often it comes about you praise people or you receive praise based on uh, circumstances or what's going on. You rejoice when you're happy, right? You know, or when things are good. But worship, worship is not dependent on circumstances. Worship is not dependent on whether things are good or not, you know? You know, or, or when you need for something from God, that's not it, worship. Does not depend on, oh, I have a problem. I'm going to go worship. No, 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 no. Worship is a heart attitude. Worship is something that is part of you, that is part of your being. Worship again, because our relationship with God is a constant thing. Okay, God is not somebody we visit in church. Like God is not your grandpa or your parents who you visit every weekend. You know, hindi mo binibisita si God. He abides in us through His Holy Spirit. Right? He abides in us. John 15, 5. If you abide in the true vine, you know, then you will bear much fruit. If you don't visit the true vine. You don't, you know, it's as if I abide in you and you and me. And you know, it's a mutual thing. You know, Matthew 28, verse 20. Jesus said, I am with you always to the end of the age. John 16 says the Holy Spirit will be with you forever. So, you know, worship is not something that you do when you feel like it or when you're happy or when you need something from God. That's not what worship is. Worship is a heart attitude. It's a, it's a, it's a consciousness of God, of your constant relationship with Him. Your constant connection with him that you revere him whether actively or inactively but your heart is is aware and very sensitive to his his presence to to his being you know so you know worship is a heart issue and and, and um you know, you got a lot of scriptures on praise talking about that you would praise the Lord at all times. Amen. You know, I, I'm for that. You know, all I was saying a while ago was that praise tends to come out when there are good things, right? Well, we know, I'm not, I'm not here to talk about that. Um, I'm not here to talk about how we praise. Or, of course, we praise the Lord at all times. His praise, praising the Lord should, should always be on our lips amen even when you don't feel like it you praise the lord amen we got that i'm not arguing with that i want to focus more on worship here you know because you i'm sure you guys already know 
about praise. I know that you guys have been taught about that. I pray that your churches will talk about it. I mean, seriously, if the church doesn't talk about it, there's a kind of a big problem there. But um, I pray that you guys already have, um, you know, solid knowledge on praising God, that we know that we praise Him at all times. But how about worship? How about worship? Right? You know, a worshipful, a worshipful heart would reveal the depth of your relationship with God. A worshipful heart would, would be an open window to see the, the, the intimacy of your relationship with the Lord. You know, worship is not, is not soaking in music. You know, I've heard brothers and sisters say that I'm just going to worship at home. I'm like, brother, you worship all day, every day. You worship God even in your sleep, man. Worship is not an action. It is a heart attitude. Worship is not just soaking in music. And I don't get me wrong. I, I do that. I do. There are times that I just lock up, you know, all by myself, you know, just play some, some, some beautiful praise and worship music. And I just talk to the Lord, but it doesn't mean that's the only time I worship. You know what I mean? It's not, that's not worship. That's not an action of worship. That is just a just me being intimate with him. But worship is always in our heart. Worship is not when you get slain and you fall back and you tumble. And I'm not, I'm not against that. Okay, there are genuine experiences of that. And I'm, I'm not questioning it. I know there's a lot of fake ones outside, but I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not against it. I'm not, I'm not against it. I, I, you know, I, I've encountered many, many genuine experiences like that. You know, many people who have been slain in the spirit. And, you know, but I'm just saying that just because you experience that doesn't mean you're worshiping God. You can get slain in the spirit. You can fall back and, and just, you know, have this over. That does not mean that you're automatically worshiping God. You know, it's not yelling in tongues during the worship service. It's not how loudly you can shout hallelujah during the worship service. You know, it, it, those are actions that people do to express worship. Okay. So I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I'm not against it. I'm not against that. I'm not against praying in tongues. I pray in tongues all the time. I probably pray in tongues more than a lot of people out there. You know, I'm not against being slain in the spirit because there is a genuine experience uh, of such, you know. I'm not against soaking soaking in, in worship music and, and, and just praying out, crying out to the Lord. I'm not, I'm not against all that. But those are actions that express worship. But worship is done, actual worship is done in the heart. Everything else, all those things, all the ministry, all those outward actions are just an overflow of what's in your heart. You know, if you are a true worshiper of God, and I say this in love, if you are a true worshiper of God, you would not want to let go of his word. If you are a true worshiper of God, the, 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 you would want to stay immersed in his word day and night. Why? Because that's how you encounter him. Everyone wants an audible voice. Everyone wants a dream and a vision and, and, a, and, and, and a manifestation that's significant. Like, like, like people have, have uh, reports of, 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 of stuff like gold dust and gemstones and stuff and, and like angel feathers and whatnot. And you know what? I'm not going to comment on that. Um, I would test the spirits, but I'm not against it. I'm not saying it's impossible. I've, I've had personal experiences like that, um, which I don't even share on here because I don't, I don't feel the need. I don't feel the need to. But here's the thing. How is your relationship with the Word of God? Because that's where you encounter Him. In the book of Peter, he, he calls it the more sure word of prophecy. The Bible, the Scriptures are the more sure word of prophecy. Everybody is so busy chasing after the supernatural, chasing after the, the goosebumps and chasing after the teary moments during the worship services where they cry out. And don't get me wrong, because I love those moments as well. I treasure them. And it's super great. It's awesome. I cry out to the Lord. I cry all the time. You know, I'm a big dude, but I'm not afraid to admit that I do cry to the Lord. I cry to him all the time. And I love him, and it's just—it's un unbelievable that 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 he, 
you know, that overflow that comes from your heart when you're in the presence of God, there's just no way. And I'm not against that. But what I am saying is that if you're doing that, but you are not immersed in the word, then that is not worship. You cannot worship God with just an outward action. If you do truly worship the Lord, you would revere and respect his word. You would you would want to immerse yourself in his word because that is where you encounter the Lord. That is where you get to know him. There is no shortcut. The word is what divides between spirit, soul, and body and, and, and discerns the thoughts and intents of your heart, right? Hebrews 4.12, the, the word is what corrects you and sharpens you and equips you for every good work. 2 Timothy 3.16 and 17. The word is, is, is what, what gives you life and feeds you. Matthew 4.4, 4. like man does not eat, uh, live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the word of God, uh, every word that comes from the mouth of God. You know, the word of God is life in spirit. It is the word where we encounter him. So again, I'm not against supernatural experiences. Guys, you know, I don't talk about this often, but I do. And you know what? A lot of, a lot of the people uh, out there who are in the supernatural circles, prophetic circles, guys, I am called to be a prophet to the nation. This is my calling. This is my office. You know, this is my office that God has given me and trusted to me. And he, the way he made it known was a supernatural way. And there's no way I could have, you know, um, I, I've never even desired it supernatural experiences i got a lot i got stuff that may shock even you you know i i got stuff to talk about that, that that make you fall off your seat or make you think that i'm crazy but i don't need to talk about it why because the word is where i find god the word is where we talk and guess what when he talks to me through the word you know there's a the margin of error is 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 smaller because you got all these supernatural experiences that you can't put the Bible verse on. And everybody's like, oh, no, but it's this, it's that. So we cannot be exalting experience over the word of God. You know what I mean? So what is my point, guys? You know, if you're a worshipful person, praise God. But I want you to check your heart. Because worship is not raising your hands. Worship is not crying out. Worship is not rolling on the floor. Worship is not screaming or praying in tongues. Worship is not soaking in, in, in some worship music or whatever. That's not, those are acts of worship. But true worship starts in your heart. And a true worshipful heart reveres and respects and desires the word of God. Right? Amen? Because the word of God is God. The word of God is God. He's the word who became flesh and dwelt among us, John 1, 14. And if you respect the word of God, I mean, that's worship. Whenever you open your Bible, your heart, your worshipful heart, gets, it just activates. It shows the Lord. It, it shows the Lord that, Lord, I want to spend time with you. I want to know you more. I have a father. I want to get to know you more, Lord. More, Lord. I want to know you. Speak to me, Father. you right. Amen. It's not just when you have time. Again, going back, I'm, you don't just visit God every Sunday or twice a week, once in a Bible study and another on Sunday. You don't just visit God, you abide in Him. And the way you abide in Him is that you keep His Word in your heart. When you plant this Word in your heart, it comes alive. And the worshipful heart will receive, will receive the Word of God. The worshipful heart will welcome the word of God. The worshipful heart is fertile soil. It's good soil where the word of God can grow and flourish and bear fruit. You know, the Lord in John 4, John 4 verses 23 and 24 says here, but an hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Guys, so a few things I want to point out. Number one, it says here in John 4, 23, an hour is coming and now is when the, the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. True worshipers. That means that there are false worshipers. It says you're true worshippers. Why make the distinction? This shows that there are false 
worshipers. And how do you spot a false worshiper? A false worshiper is someone who does not worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Those two are inseparable because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Amen? The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Jesus in John 14, chapter six, uh, John 14, verse 6, said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Truth is a person. You cannot separate the spirit from truth. You cannot separate the word from truth. Truth and the word are one and the same. Spirit and the, and the truth are one and the same. You have to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, and you cannot separate these two. But unfortunately, we now have a lot of teachings out there that have totally disregarded both the spirit and the truth. They worship God through their tradition, not in spirit and in truth. You cannot worship God genuinely. You are not a true worshiper of the Father if you do not worship in spirit and in truth. You know, I don't quote um, authors and other preachers very often, but I feel the need to. I want to share this with you guys. And you know, many years, uh, many years back, a few years back, sorry, not that many, a few years back, I read a book that was very influential in my walk as a Christian. And this book was entitled Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire. Okay. And uh, again, guys, you know me, I stick to Bible verses. I don't really endorse books or authors or, or certain preachers. I want you to stick to the Bible as much as possible. But anyway, I just, I just wanted to share this with you guys because this is something that did change my life. And in that book uh, called Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire, the author, his name is Jim Simbola. He is a pastor. Brooklyn and he, the name of his church is the Brooklyn Tabernacle. I, I've been there. My goodness. You have not worshipped, you have not attended a worship service like that ever. It's the first time in my whole life that I saw people lining up to get to church. Lining up three blocks, round three buildings, three whole blocks in New York City, in Brooklyn, just to enter the church. I got there an hour early and we were in the last maybe 30 seats. At people hungry for God. And anyway, he has his book. It's called Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire. And then he said, he, one, one of the most powerful um, takeaways I, ha I have in there, he said, if you have the word without the spirit, you will dry up. If you go for the spirit without the word, you will blow up. But if you have the word and the spirit, you will grow up. And that is beautiful. You got the word Without the Spirit, you will dry up. You got the Spirit. Without the Word, you will blow up. You got the Spirit and the Word, the truth, you will grow up. You will grow up. And that's, you know, and that's like, again, going back to John 4, 23 and 24, we worship God in spirit and in truth. You know? Guys, I'll be honest with you. I don't care how good you can sing or how hyped up you get or how flail your hands around when you're worshiping the Lord in the worship service or how loud you can shout hallelujah it doesn't matter I, it doesn't matter if you kneel or you fall or you fall prostrate and I don't I'm not saying it's bad you know why because I do that okay I do that as, as as my spirit leads I'm not I'm just saying it's not the action that is the worshipful part it is your heart it is your intention why you are doing that because we cannot fool God God knows our hearts God made our hearts he knows our hearts he knows you he searches our hearts he knows every thought so as you go to that service you go to that worship night you know and we do have metanoia worship nights coming up and and um you know, as we go there, we raise hands, we cry out to the Lord, we pray in tongues, we kneel. You can fall prostrate on the floor and worship to the Lord, but it is not your action that is the worship. It is your heart attitude, your intention, why you do that. That is the worship. You and I, we cannot fool God. Kahit na anong ganyan, ganyan, ganyan mo ng kamay mo, kahit na anong tongues mo dyan, God sees your heart. And He knows whether you have a worshipful heart or not. And the worshipful heart values the Word of God. The worshipful heart worships Him both in spirit and in truth. 
It's not just after the spiritual experience and the goosebumps and, and the wonderful, all these things and, and the sensations and all that and the warmth. And that's awesome. I'm not against it again, but you can't, you can't separate that from the word of God. And at the same time, you can't just say Bible, Bible, Bible and call everything that, that seems odd, demonic. You got to discern because there are demonic stuff. I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know. You know, the enemy is a great counterfeiter. The enemy is a great copier. He will imitate whatever there. He will give you a, a false experience, and it's similar. And I, we've dealt with a lot of that in this ministry. We've dealt with many cases of Kundalini, Holy Spirit, um, uh, demons who imitate the power of God, but it's demonic. You know, we've dealt with a lot of that, and th that's a problem because people need to be worshiping God in spirit and in truth. You can't separate the Holy Spirit from the Word of God. They work hand in hand. You try to go overshoot on either side, you will be in trouble, my friend. So, you know, when, when you talk about worship in the Bible, who's the first character that comes to your mind? For me, it's David. If you talk about worship, it's, it's David. You know, I myself am a musician. And I, I love the story of David because he's a, well, he's a psalmist. He's, he... He's a musician as well. You know how many psalms were there that he wrote and those psalms are beautiful and they just speak volumes to the heart. And I actually am going to teach from the psalms today, you know. But um, anyway, so like I said earlier, you know, the Lord was, was revealing this to my heart to share with you guys at two in the morning. And, and, and he reminded me of a passage in 1 Samuel 21, 1 Samuel 20 and 21, like that area. And... During this time, it was about David, you know, he found out, I don't know how well versed you are in the word or how familiar you are with the Old Testament, but, you know, King David, he was not king yet during this time. Saul was still the king. And then Saul was jealous of him. And Saul's son, Jonathan, who was best friend, super best friend of, um, of David, uh, David found out from Jonathan that Saul wanted to kill him. Saul wanted to kill David so badly. And David, and David fled, and he ran away. You know, and the, one of the, the when he found out about this, he ran to a place called Nob, and in Nob he met with a high priest there, or the priest called Ahimelech. Okay, and Ahimelech was a priest, and um, this is the, this is the time when he went there, and then Ahimelech was asking David, like, "Oh, what are you doing here? Um, I, I did not know that you were coming." And he's like, "Oh, you got food for my men." And Ahimelech offered him the showbread, you know, the consecrated bread, which is not supposed to be. But um, um, anyway, so, and and uh, David asked him, do you have any weapons? Because David was not even, he didn't even have time to prepare. He was so afraid for his life that could, because Saul wanted to kill him that he just ran away. He didn't even have a sword with him. So he asked Ahimelech, the priest, he said, um, "Are do you have any weapons here? He said, all we have here." is the sword of Goliath, the giant that you killed. Remember earlier on, I think it's 1 Samuel 6 or 16 or something, somewhere there. But uh, earlier on, a few chapters, David killed Goliath when he was a young lad, right? And he used Goliath's sword to, to decapitate the giant, right? And, and anyway, so here we see again Goliath's sword. It was a huge sword. Obviously, Goliath used it. And it but it was the only weapon available. And David was in a bad spot. David was terrified. David was in fear. You know, so what happened? So what happened after that? Okay, let's go. So after that, he went to the, after he went to Ahimelech, he fed his men with the, with the consecrated bread and he got the sword of Goliath. Where did David go? Let's go to 1 Samuel 21. 1 Samuel 21 verses 10 to 15. Okay, it says in verse 10, it says, Then David arose and fled that day from Saul and went to Achish, king of Gath. <clears throat> Verse 11. <clears throat> but the servants of Achish said to him, Is this not David, the king of the land? Did they not sing of this one as, as they danced, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? <clears throat> Sorry. So, guys, David was notorious. David, they knew they knew David. Sorry, my throat's itchy. <coughs> Sorry. 
<clears throat> so David was notorious. Obviously, they would know of David. Because remember, Goliath was from Gath. Guys, this is the homeland of Goliath. Why would... No, no, let me read the passage first, sorry, before I get into that, sorry. I'll read it again. First Samuel 21, verse 10. Then David arose and fled that day from Saul and went to Achish, king of Gath. But the servants of Achish said to him, Is this not David, the king of the land? Did they not sing of this one at this one as they danced, saying, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands? Verse 12. David took these words to heart and greatly feared Achish, king of Gath. So he disguised his sanity before them and acted insanely in their hands and scribbled on the doors of the gate and let his saliva run down his beard. And then Achish said to his servants, Behold, you see a man behaving as a madman. Why do you bring him to me? Verse 15, Do I lack madmen that you have brought this one to act the madman in my presence? Shall this one come into my house? So, guys, Again, David was terrified of Saul. David was running away for his life, right? But imagine to be so terrified that you ended up in your enemy's home. David went to Gath. Goliath was from Gath. Gath is part of the Philistines. These are the enemies of the kingdom of Israel. You know, he went to Gath in the land of the Philistines. David was notorious there. They knew the song that Saul killed his thousands. David is ten thousands, you know. And, and they, guess guess what? What happened right before this? He went to the, the priest, Ahimelech, in Nob, and got the sword of Goliath. So you are carrying the sword of the champion of the of the people of Gath, who you killed. Sipin mo yun, ikaw yung pumatay sa hero nila, ikaw yung pumatay sa champion nila, tapos pupunta ka dun dun kahihingi ng tulong. You know, think about that. You will go to your enemy's house for help. So it just, guys, how desperate, how desperate and how crazy do you have to be to seek refuge in your enemy's house? How terrified do you have to be? So what's my point? I'm not... I'm saying this season in David's life, this was horrible. This was a painful and, and, and emotional, um, it was an emotional roller coaster for David to go through this. How, how, how desperate do you have to be to go to your enemy's house and ask for help? You were the one who killed their champion. You hold and bear the sword of the champion whom you killed in front of everybody. And then you go there for whatever reason. When he gets there, you know, he he pretends that he's he's crazy. Why? Because he was so afraid. And he was like, Siguro natauhan siya. Maybe he just woke up. Nahimas masan siya in the middle of it. It's like, oh my goodness, what am I doing here? This is a bad decision. So what did he do? He pretended that he was crazy. And here's David, the king, anointed by Samuel. All right? You have the king anointed by Samuel. And, and all these supernatural, you know... Things happened that he was able to defeat Goliath and he's amazing man and 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 um and now he's there and then now he's terrified that's like what am I doing here? So he pretends to be insane. He pretends to be a madman. You know, isipin mo si David na sobrang galante ng itsura, guapo, lahat lahat. What was he doing? He he disguised his sanity before them. He acted insanely in their hands. He scribbled on the doors of the gate and his saliva ran down his beard. Tululaway. Parang nababaliw nga. So, ano yung reaction ng king? The reaction of the king was like, wow, ayoko na ito. Lakas ang tama ito. <laughs> like, why do you guys bring a madman um, to me? You know, um, I, I read somewhere before in the Old Testament, some history book, I forgot which one. But uh, in the Old Testament, you know, there were no clear ways of dealing with demons, right? Um, it's only in the New Testament that we see Jesus casting out demons and we see the believers of Jesus Christ casting out demons as well through the authority of Jesus Christ. But in the Old Testament, they had no way to deal with demons. There's no clear-cut way, you know? Um, you know, I read somewhere that culturally people in that area, in that, um, that, uh, 
that time and that, that place, they believe that if you were crazy, you were demonized. And that if you would kill a crazy person, their demons would transfer to you. Okay, so so during that time, Ahimelech, uh, sorry, not, not, not Ahimelech, um, Achish, kakatunog yung pangalan nila, Achish, the king of Gath, sent this guy away. Because like, you know what? They were probably thinking that if we kill this guy, his crazy demons might just come to us and transfer. You know? So, so David, this was really degrading on his part. Natulu sa laway, pretending to be crazy, scribbling on the gate and all that, but it did save his life. Now, 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 I want you to think about this. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Imagine how David felt. Sipi mo yung pakiramdam ni David. Imagine how he felt that he, in, in one day, in one night, he had to run away from his home. He had to run away from his life. He had to run away and he had nothing with him. He wasn't able to prepare. All he had to eat was the bread from the temple. From the, sorry, not from, from, the, from the temple where, where, the, where the priest Ahimelech gave him food. He's not even supposed to eat it. The only weapon he had was the weapon of the giant he killed years before. And where the only place he could run to was the house of the yun, yung taranta ni David. Imagine how confused, how terrified, how bad, how depressed, how, how, how much of a struggle he had in his heart during this time in his life. He was literally running for his life. You know? And, and that's, that's so painful. Imagine how he felt. And he was so low, it was lower than low. This would something you would call rock bottom. And where did he go? He hid in a cave. Guys, I don't know about you guys. We live in a modern day society. There aren't that many caves around here anymore, I guess. But I doubt that any of you were so terrified that you hid inside a cave before. Right? Imagine that. David, confirmed king as by the prophet Samuel, slaying a giant with, with a slingshot, no armor. Well known in the land, people have made songs about David. People respect you. Even the king is afraid of you. The king is you have done nothing wrong. You are innocent. You are well respected. And now you sacrifice your dignity to save your skin. And then you hide in a cave. Rock bottom. Rock bottom. But you know what, guys? In this cave, something happened. Let's go to 1 Samuel 22. 1 Samuel 22, verses 1 and 2. It says, 1 Samuel 22, verse 1. So David departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brothers and all his father's household heard of it, they went down there to him. Everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, everyone who was discontented gathered to him. And he became captain over them. Now there were about 400 men with him. Guys, listen to me. This was the worst, one of the worst parts of David's life. He was running away for his, for his own life. He was so confused and so desperate, he ended up going to, to the house of his enemy to seek refuge. And then when he realized it was a bad decision, he pretended to be insane and at the expense of his dignity once again just to escape and hid in a cave. But in that cave, in that dark place, in that rock bottom, in that garbage dump of a life, his family submitted to his kingship. His family that was making fun of him. Even the, 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 older, the older brothers of, of David who, who accused him of doing this and doing that. Remember when, when David was, was, was tasked by his father to bring food because his older brothers, I think it's Eliab, was the name, uh, he was sent by his father to send food and the brothers were getting mad at him. Like, hey, what are you doing here? You little runt, you know, like what, what are you doing? So anyway, what is, what is my point? In David's rock bottom, inside a dark, stinky, deep cave, the cave of Adullam, his family submitted to his kingship. The rejected, the broken, the worst of the worst, the criminals, the people who were the rejects of society came to him and submitted to his leadership. Well, they're not the best bunch, right? Like, who, who are these guys, right? You know, who, they're not the best bunch, but who are these men? Who are the people of Adullam and submitted to David's leadership? Who were the men, the rejects of society, 
who, who gathered to David and he became captain over them. Who are these guys? The, the guys who came to David in the ended up becoming the 30 mighty men of David. You know that? The rejects, the hooligans, the criminals, the garbage all became mighty men who are now, whose names are now immortalized in the word of God. Think about that. What is my point, guys? What is my point? Everyone finds themselves in a cave at some point. Okay? Any, anyone, I know a lot of you guys, especially me, I, I've been there, guys. I've been through rock bottom, and it's a horrible experience. Everybody will find themselves in a cave at some point. And maybe that's right now for you. I don't know. Maybe you, maybe you lost a loved one. I'm sorry. Maybe your business folded up. I'm sorry. Maybe you're... Maybe you're your job, you lost your job, or maybe, you know, you're missing payments here and there and you're getting in trouble or whatever. Everyone finds themselves in a cave at some point and you're so confused and you make bad decisions and you're doing crazy stuff. You feel that you've lost your dignity and you find yourself in a deep and dark and damp cave. But what makes the difference is that is what you do in that cave. What do you do when you're in the cave? Because for some reason, this lowest point when David was hiding into the cave, this was when he was elevated. When you think that you, you, know, you are rock, rock bottom and things can't get any better, guess what? His family, who used to make fun of him, came and submitted to him. He became a captain of 400. He, these rejects of society came and gathered to David and, and he became their leader. And those rejects ended up being the 30 mighty men of David that, who serve the kingdom of the living God. Can you imagine that? The difference between victory and defeat is what you do when you're in the cave. If you're in a cave right now, what are you doing? Going back to the topic, are you worshiping God in that cave? Are you worshiping God even though you're stuck in that cave? Even though it's dark, it's deep, and it's troublesome, and your heart's broken, and everything hurts, and everything seems so hopeless. In your heart, are you worshiping God? Why do I ask this? Because that is exactly what David did. If you go to Psalm 34, very popular psalm, super popular psalm, Psalm 34, David wrote that while he was in the cave of Adullam. David wrote that when he ran away from the King Achish of Gath and sacrificed his dignity, spitting on his beard and writing, scribbling on the gates and pretending to be insane. The great David, who serves the living God, pretending to be insane, hiding in a cave, rock bottom. He wrote Psalm 34. David, despite all his bad you know, bad situations, bad experiences, he never stopped worshiping God. Because worship is not just an action. Worship is a heart attitude. I'm going to read 10 verses from Psalm 34. For the sake of time, I'm not going to go all, all the verse, all, go read all the verses. Go, You can do that on your own time. This is one of my favorite Psalms. But um, I find myself running to this Psalm when I, you know, when, when, when I'm discouraged and when I'm fighting some stuff on, in my own life. you know. But I'm going to read the first 10 verses here. Psalm 34, verse 10. And again, I remind you guys, David wrote this when he was in, in fear. He was in terror. He was in the lowest of the lows. He was in a cave. He had nothing. He had no allies. He didn't know what to do. But he still wrote this. Psalm 34, verse 1. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Guys, think about that. Verse 1 pa lang. This is David. Lowest of the lows. Super broken, super struggling with emotions and everything. And uncertainty, not knowing if he's going to see his wife again. Not knowing if he's going to see... Whoever, again, doesn't know if he's going to get killed or what Saul is going to do because Saul is crazy. And then yet he says in Psalm 34, verse 1, I will bless the Lord 
at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and rejoice. Verse 3, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. He will be. He's talking to us. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Guys, this is a broken man in the lowest point of his life in a cave life listen to his words oh magnify the lord with me and let us exalt him. verse 4 i sought me and delivered me from all my fears they looked to him and were radiant and their faces will never be ashamed verse 6 this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescues them. Verse 8. This one's a popular verse. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you, his saints. For to those who fear him, there is no want. Verse 10. One of my favorite verses. The young lions, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they who seek the Lord shall not be in want of any good thing. Sa Tagalog, lahat na nagtitiwala sa Panginoon ay hindi kukulangin na anumang mabuting bagay. Those who trust in the Lord shall not be in want, shall not be in lack of any good thing. Guys, my goodness. Yung first verse pa lang, I will bless the Lord at all times. This is David worshipping God in the lowest of his lows. This is David worshipping God from the depths of a cave, the cave of Adullam. This is David who sacrifices dignity, yet he says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know what? Because God's goodness does not depend on your circumstances. Whether you are rich or not, healthy or not, or whatever, God is good. Whether you have a billion in your bank or zero in your bank, God is good. No matter what happens to any of us, God is good. Because God's goodness does not depend on our circumstances. David understood that. You know what, you know what I love? I love the character of David so much because he knows more about grace and Christianity than most Christians do today. He even calls, look at this, look at this, look at this. He even calls them saints. Where is that? He said... Sought the Lord, he answered me, delivered me from all my fears. They looked up to him and were radiant, and their faces will never be ashamed. Buti pa to, alam niya. You know, uh, this poor man cried, the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Where'd it go? Ayun, verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, you, his saints. Guys, how many Christians today still call themselves sinners? How many Christians say, oh, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. You know what? If you call yourself a sinner after receiving Jesus, you have a problem. Because Jesus took the sinner up on the cross so that you could be a saint. You know that? You have a new identity. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the old is gone, the new has come. Galatians 2, 20, it's no longer you who live, but Christ who lives in you. The sinner is dead. The sinner has been nailed to the cross. You are a, now a new creation in Christ. You are now a child of God. You were a saint. You know, and I go see here that David refers to, 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 to the readers, us, as his saints, uh, the Lord's saints. You know, it just shows that he knows the heart of God. Anyway, going back, going back. I'm going to wrap up in a bit. Um, let's go skip down verse 17 for the sake of time. Psalm, Psalm 34, verse 17. It says, the righteous cry, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. I want you to highlight that verse. I believe that's for you right now. If that's you, if you're struggling with something in your family, if you're struggling financially, if you're struggling with something going on in your life, if you feel like you're David and you feel like you're stuck in a cave, it's like us during lockdown. If you're stuck, you can't go out, you can't do anything, you can't... <laughs> No idea what's happening next. No idea what you're going to do. You know what? Go to this verse. Highlight this. Underline this. I don't know. Memorize this. Whatever. Write it down on a post-it. Stick it wherever. Keep it on your phone. 
says Psalm 34, verse 17. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. All. Walang lulusot dyan. Kapag kilala mo kung sino ang Panginoon at kilala mo kung sino ka dahil kay Jesus Kristo, all, all those troubles, hindi ka niya papabayaan. Walang malaki, walang maliit, walang mahirap, walang madali para sa Panginoon. Lahat yan pare-pareho. Yung problema mo, hindi malaki yan. Yung pinagdadaanan mo, hindi malaki yan. Whatever you're going through, that's nothing is too, he- too hard or too big for the Lord. Nothing is too difficult for Him. His arm is not short. The Lord delivers him out of them all. And the key here is to know who God is. To worship him in spirit and in truth. To value and revere his word. Verse 20 says, He keeps all his bones. Not one of them is broken. This was prophetic of what happened to Jesus Christ on the cross. Guys, David, going back, I'm going to wrap this up, going back. David was at the lowest point of his life. And in the cave, at that lowest point, at that degrading point of his life, he was promoted. He was promoted to captain of a 400. He was promoted as his family respected and submitted to his kingship. His family who used to make fun of him. His family who had no respect for him. These hooligans, these these people who were hated and rejected by society, became heroes of the Bible. The 30 mighty men came to him here. At the lowest point in his life, David was promoted. Why? Because he had a worshipful heart. Because even though he was in that cave, his heart was overflowing. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Bless the Lord at all times, that his praise should be continually be on our lips. Because he delivers us from all our fears and all our troubles. Imagine the words of David crying out to God instead of getting angry at God and saying, Law, why you do this? Why you do that? Why you do No, no, no. He was praising the Lord. David had a worshipful heart. Even when you don't feel like it. Even when, when everything seems to be lost. When you are at the lowest of the lows, can you worship God? Can you call him good? Is your heart steadfast before him? Can you believe that he is the God who who bends the broken? He's not the God who breaks your bones. That's a different God. If anyone comes to you saying that your, your God is the God who breaks your bones, they preach a different Jesus. Our God is the healer, not the condemner. Our God is the healer, the restorer, not the breaker of bones. Our God is the God of love, not the God of hate. Our God is the God of perfect health, not the God of cancer. We got to sort that out. Not one of them bones are broken. And anyone who tells you that, oh, this is the, God's doing this, God's doing that. You know what? That's a different God that they serve. My goodness. Guys, David had a worshipful heart. And it was because of his worshipful heart that his lowest point became a, a springboard for him to be elevated. And he went through a lot of stuff. He went through a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, but he never stopped worshiping God. God, Because worship is not just your actions. Worship is not just the experience. Worship is not just a loud hallelujah. Worship is not just the being slain in the spirit or soaking in music for hours or playing whatever. No, those are actions of worship. is done in your heart. And when you're in a cave, Bitter, broken, distressed. Can you worship God from your heart? Can you say, I will bless the Lord at all times? Can you overflow with God's love, even in the lowest of lows? And that is the faith. That is the faith that pleases God. The only way David could ever do any of this was that he knew God intimately. He held on to God's word and God's promises that no matter how dark it is, he said, no, my God is good. 
My circumstances do not determine the goodness of my God. My circumstances do not determine the faithfulness of my God. He will deliver me. Uh, I, I may not see it right now, but he's going to do it. I'm going to, he's going to see me through because he is a good God. He will need any of my bones to be broken. He is a good God. He will deliver me from all my fears and all my troubles. He is a good God. I'm going to worship him even at my lowest. I'm going to worship him when I'm on top and I'm going to worship him when I'm on the bottom. I'm going to worship him up in the mountaintops. I'm going to worship him down in the valley. I'm going to worship him in the cave. It doesn't matter where I am because God is good all the time. And he will never leave us nor forsake us. My circumstances do not determine the faithfulness of God. And that is a heart of worship right there. We worship God in spirit and in truth. We are New Testament believers now. And we are more fortunate. We are more blessed than David. You know that? You know what? You, you know why I can say that? Because we got Jesus Christ. J David did not have Jesus Christ. David did not have a Messiah to die for him on the cross. David did not have a complete Bible in his hands. David didn't have this. David couldn't download something free from 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 apple store or whatever you know or play store or whatever he couldn't he couldn't download a free bible he couldn't download a concordance he couldn't download a commentary he couldn't download any of this stuff he couldn't watch a, a live bible study on the internet when he was discouraged we have a superior revelation of god compared to david and we have no excuse not to worship god in spirit and in truth guys don't get so outward actions over the manifestations the supernatural don't judge hey man seriously don't judge don't say ah demon again no 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 be very careful because as long as the bible doesn't speak about it don't don't close the book on the holy spirit okay i'm not against the gold dust i'm not against supernatural encounters i'm not against visions because i experience them as well i just don't highlight it you know why because this is enough when god says something here whatever he says here I'm going to hang on to this. When God says that he is my healer, I believe him. Not because I have a goose bump. I'm crying. No. Whether or not I feel anything, God said it here. Can you trust God that much? Because that is a heart of worship. And that is what set David apart. That is what took David from the lowest of the lows and propelled him to be king of Israel and take his place. Brothers and sisters, we worship in truth, not in the flesh. Do We do not worship God in the flesh. We worship God in the spirit, in spirit and in truth. Don't just praise. It's true, amen, Psalm 34, 1, let his praise continually be in your lips, but it's not the, the action of praise, it is the heart intention of it. Worship takes place at the core of our being, our heart. And God knows our hearts. So you worship God by filling your heart with his word. Amen? Amen? Were you guys blessed by that? I was blessed. I was blessed by that. You know, I told you guys earlier, man, the Lord showed me this at two in the morning. Imagine how I felt. How do you think I'm going to go to sleep seeing this and experiencing God's goodness? And, you know, again, I'm just going to say it again. I'm not against supernatural experiences. I'm not. I, I have them regularly. You know, maybe if we get to meet somebody about it, we could chat about it. I'm not going to preach on it. You know, I'm going to stick to the word of God. I don't want to get distracted. You know, it's a good experience. I'm thankful. I enjoy it. I praise the Lord, but I'm not going to chase after it. What, what, what can, what, the supernatural experiences I have with the Lord are not the reason for my faith. I don't believe in God because I experience Him supernaturally. No. Supernatural experiences I have encountered are a byproduct of my faith. You understand? I'm going to say that again. The supernatural experiences that I have are not the reason for my faith, they are the byproduct of my faith. So angelic encounters, encounters with Jesus, intimate words from the Lord, Holy Spirit shows me this, shows me that, you know, that's not, um, that's not, that's not the reason why I believe. They happen because I believe. 
But whether I feel something or not, this is enough. This is enough. This is the word of life. Plant this in your heart. A true heart of worship will honor and revere the word of God. We worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen? I was blessed by that. I was blessed by that. Whew, thank you, Lord. So that's what I got for you guys today. I pray that that ministered to you guys. I pray that this spoke to your heart. Guys, wherever you are right now in your life, even at your lowest point, even if you're hiding in a cave, even if you feel degraded and just, even if it's not your fault, worship God in spirit and in truth. Worship God in your heart. And your lowest moment may just be transformed into the springboard that will take you to the top. The lowest point, don't be afraid of it. Because wherever you go, God is with you. God loves you. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. His goodness does not depend on your circumstances. His goodness is constant. He is always good and only good. There is no darkness in him. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Let's pray. Let us pray. Lord God, Father, we thank you for this time. I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are here. I thank you for my brothers and sisters who, um, who are watching with us today. I pray that they receive this. And I speak for you are a child of God, and he loves you. And look at me, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Whatever you are worrying about right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak life upon your situation. I speak health upon your bones. I speak health upon your organs and your blood levels. I speak healing over you in the name of Jesus. Those tumors, I command them out right now in Jesus' name. Those ulcers, I command them to stop name of Jesus. Anxiety, get out. Depression, get out. They are not welcome. They are not welcome. There's no room for anxiety and depression in the, in, the, in the body of a child of God. So I bless your mind right now with the blood of Jesus. I bless, I, I declare that we are covered by the blood of Jesus. Our spirit, our soul, our body, they are all cleansed. I declare freedom in the name of Jesus. I speak financial provisions over you, brother and sister. The Lord knows your needs. Even before you needed them, the Lord already knew Matthew 6, verse 8. He has provided. He has provided already. He is able to do exceeding abundantly more than what we can ask or think according to the power that works within us, Ephesians 3, 20. So I declare right now that your drought is over, that fruitfulness will come about in the name of Jesus, that the seed of the word planted today would just grow and prosper and blossom in your life and yield a great harvest. I declare that because you trust the Lord, you will lack no good thing. Psalm 34, verse 10. Father, we thank you for this time. We worship you wholeheartedly, Father, in spirit and in truth. Father, we repent of those times that we neglected your word. We repent of those times that, that, that we separated your spirit from your word. We re repent of those times that we exalted those spiritual encounters and neglected your word, Father. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth, and I pray that the light of Christ would shine upon the lives of my brothers and sisters here, that they may see what they got to give up. They may see what they got to change. They may see what they have to uh, address and correct through your word, Lord. For we are you tr your true worshipers. We want to be your true worshipers. Father, everything belongs to you. We thank you that this may be a temporary season that we're down, but we thank you, Lord, that you are going to springboard back up. You are going to take us up. You are going to be the one to put us on that pedestal. We, you are going to be the one to elevate us, Lord, again. Despite this economy, despite the lockdown, despite the damage from COVID, despite all these economic troubles, Lord, you will elevate us. And when people ask us, how did that happen? What was, What did you do? All we can answer, Lord, is we have a good God. And the only reason why we are fruitful, the only reason why we are healed, the only reason why we are prosperous and blessed and protected is simply because Jesus Christ is Lord. And that He is good and only good. So Father, we thank you for this time. I lift up to you every family represented here, every person watching this. We lift them up to you. We thank you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, so whew, I was blessed by that. That ministered to me. You know, when I when I when I preach up here, 
Sometimes I preach to myself. <laughs> I needed that too. So guys, you know, I'm so blessed by you guys. I'm so blessed by your seeking hearts. I'm blessed by the support that you guys have given us through the ministry. My goodness, you guys know who you are. We love you. We love you. You are God's blessing, really. I mean, to see you guys progress and, and progress and prosper and be a blessing to others. For, for those of you who shared your testimonies with us, how you are now sharing these truths with other people. Goodness. You. Keep the fire burning strong. The fire of the Holy Spirit, keep it burning strong. Continue to love with the love of Jesus. Continue to extend grace to the unlovable. Continue to exercise wisdom as you go out there and minister the truth to people out there. Brothers and sisters, you are loved, you are blessed, you are favored, you are prosperous, you are healthy, you are healed. And I'm blessed to be here and I'm blessed to be able to share this with you. So I look forward to meeting each of you individually soon. Uh, and uh, as soon as the government allows us to gather together, I want to see you guys. I want to worship with you guys. I want to hug you guys. I want to pray for you guys. All right. So again... Guys, thanks for tuning in. We will be back tomorrow at 8 p.m. for the Tagalog Bible study. Um, again, next week. Oh, yeah. Now, next week, we're going to have a different format. It's still Wednesday, Saturday at 5, Sunday at 8. And uh, we'll let you know if we have any additional meetings from there. But um, anyway, guys, God bless you. Thank you for uh, tuning in. If this message blessed you and you want to share this with somebody else, go share, PM, whatever. But so much better if you go back to the scriptures, you should. Amen. Guys, I love you with the love of Jesus. See you tomorrow, 8 o'clock. God bless.